The breaking news from the NBA is not good. It's bad news out of Oklahoma City. Thunder rookie Chet Holmgren will miss the entire upcoming season because of a Liz Frank injury to his right foot. Think about how you'd handle it. You're preparing for your first season in the NBA, having a monster summer of workouts. And in a harmless instant, it's over. Now, you're watching from the side and where every day your Super Bowl is moving a toe or being able to shoot with a boot on. Would you sulk or would you sweat? Stay with us, stay with us, stay with us. But you make progress, little by little, leaning into the work ethic that got you here in the first place. Day by day, milestone by milestone, you're getting there. You've got people behind you, believing it's a minor setback for a major comeback. And when you do get back, you know it will be well worth the wait. These fans waited over a year to watch Chet Holmgren. I like stories like this, guys that come out of nowhere. And Chet Holmgren is the rookie of the year. Chet Holmgren is a dog. Oh! From the first second we saw him play in Summer League, all Chet Holmgren has done is get better. We've seen the trend in each matchup, how Chet has adjusted and grown, much of it by leaning on the film room as his sanctuary to feed that hunger to improve. Holmgren, again, another spin move, almost the exact same play, except this time it results in authoritative jam. Okay, this one, spin move. What are you looking for to set this type of lube up? Um, I mean, you want me to give my shots away? No, you're not. <laughs> Whatever you want to say. Um, just trying to read the defender and, you know, if I see them giving up the spin move and take spin move. One of the things that I think is kind of interesting, and I'm going to ask you about this more later, is just how tight you seem to keep the ball now. Is that an area that you feel like you've gotten better at? Like on this spin, it's really quick and like compact. Yeah, 100%. Is that somewhere you've gotten better at? Yeah, I mean, all the moves that I do, I try to get better at them over time and clean up some areas where it might not be as effective that might lead to mistakes. Yeah. Um, and with spin moves, sometimes a secondary defender coming over, uh, if I keep it too loose or if I'm slow with it or spin at the wrong time, they're able to make a play. So just, uh, you know, trying to be smart and read that. Holmgren passed up the three. Instead, he will drive and nobody there to slow him down. You know, you've handled these types of situations. You're going around them right here. You blow by them. What's kind of the thought process in when you want to shoot it over somebody or you want to just drive around them? When I decide to shoot the ball, I'm pretty much big enough where I can get my shot off. At it. Like, I still could have got that shot off. And early in the year, I was pump faking too much to the point where teams didn't even believe I was going to shoot. Mm. So they just close short, take the drive away. And now I found a good balance of like, if you're going to close short, I'm going to you know, shoot the ball and I get my temps are way up and I'm shooting the ball well, so I got to keep that going. But, you know, if somebody's going to leave their feet completely, I'm playing advantage basketball, uh, you know, I can get by them and then we're playing four on. I mean, you do five have, on four from there. You do have a lethal pump fake. I mean, everybody bites on it. Is that something that you've developed over time, or is that something that uh, you've always had? Um, definitely something over time, I'd say. What is the mindset here, where it's just like you're going up two hands and you're just taking contact and you're just going to stop that thing? In the moment, in the speed of the game or everything, you're just trying to make a play. The moment of truth is big because if you help too early, then they know you're there and they'll make the right pass mm -hmm. most of the time. So, you know, helping at the last second when they've already made their mind up, like he knows he's going to try to run. Yeah, I can even kind of see the whether, way that you're in that whether spot. Whether I jump or not. Yeah, so, where it's like you almost kind of commit like, you're like, I'm in right there. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you have to go super late just so that they don't really have the option of shoot or yeah. pass. Like right here, he's, 
got no pass option. He's already decided to shoot. So. And you're just going to meet him right there at the rim. Shut off initially. There, all over Holmgren. Holmgren still able to get it up. So this is on, you know, multiple time defensive player of the year, Rudy Gobert. And to me, like, this is just such an incredible, like, sign of improvement for you, of like contact, you're battling through it, and the way you can protect the ball against a guy like Gobert. Is that an area you feel like you personally gotten a lot better? Oh, uh, definitely gotten better. I feel like I have a lot more area to grow and blowing up that shoulder uh, on those kind of chests when guys are sliding on my drives, kind of yeah. blowing up that top shoulder and kind of getting around. I still got to get a lot better at that. But, uh, you know, I've definitely got better at it. And, you know, that's how it goes. You don't get from A to B in an instance. You know, you got to work and, you know, it takes time to get there. there it's Chet Holmgren to spike it down. From day one, Chet has been about the team, thinking in terms of togetherness, something that has carried over and made Thunder Post Games event viewing. His impact has been holistic, his focus on connecting the floor, his fearlessness in the moment of truth, his approach to efficiency, his willingness to fit and amplify, his ruthless competitive edge. He's just about all the right things. Sam Presti put it best, Chet's mindset is as unique as his game.